and today I'm going to talk about how to easily migrate to Airflow 2.0 and above. Just a bit about myself for the people who are new to the community. Uh, my name is Kakshil Naik. I am an Airflow committer and a PMC member. I work at Astronomer as a manager of the Airflow engineering team. I spend most of the time working on the open source, contributing to the project, reviewing PRs and whatnot. So let's get started. This is the rough agenda for this talk. Um, why upgrade to 2.0 and above? <laughs> uh, pretty requisites for it, the upgrade check tool, major changes, uh, upgrading to 2.x finally, and then some of my recommendations. So most of you might have questions why we should upgrade to 2.0 and above. So let's get to the bottom of it. Airflow 110x has reached end of its life on 17 June, like last month. That's a good enough reason for upgrading um, to the newer versions itself. When I say end of life, it means no new releases for 110X series would be cut. Even for security fixes, we won't be releasing any new versions. And then of course, the awesome new features and performance improvements uh, for Airflow 2.0 and 2.1. Um, you can see the auto refresh. A feature which a lot of users loved it. And the performance improvements were more than 100x improvements uh, for, for scheduler at least. So I hope that that provides good enough reasons um, to upgrade. So first and foremost, please, please upgrade to Python 3 if you haven't already. I've been saying this a lot, even in my previous talks, Python 2 has reached end of its life 18 months ago now. We have dropped support for Python 2 uh, from Airflow 2.0 and above. In fact, we only officially support Python 3.6, 3.7, and 3.8. We will be releasing Airflow 2.1 to tomorrow, um, which will have, which will also add an official support for to Python 3.9. Um, when I say official, it means we will run all the tests in the CI with those Python versions. So currently we are running um, tests with Python 3.9 uh, in GitHub Actions for on the official Airflow repo. So once you are done with this step, like I, I would say this again, if you are on Python 2, please, please upgrade to Python 3 right now. Um, the next step. So let's say if you are on a very old version of uh, Airflow 110.5 or 110.2 even, then the first step should be to upgrade to the Airflow 1, uh, 110 15 versions. We call um, the latest or the last 110x version as the bridge release between Airflow 1 and Airflow 2. So 110 15 was the final release. So we won't be cutting any new 110x release, like I already mentioned. But to, to make it easier for users to upgrade to Airflow 2, um, we have backported many changes from Airflow 2.2 to this version. Um, some, some of the important ones are the uh, new CLI commands. The CLI was refactored into 2.0. We, we now have a logical grouping of commands. Um, example, all, all DAG related commands are grouped under Airflow DAX command. Uh, previously this was trigger DAG, um, show DAG and different commands. So we are now grouped together. So you have Airflow DAX, trigger, Airflow DAX, show and, and similarly. This command will work on both by uh, uh, both Airflow 11015 and Airflow 2 and above. So I, I'm saying this because using Airflow 1105, you can do all the updates you want. Like 11015, if you use Airflow Trigger Deck or if you use Airflow Dex Trigger, both of them will work. So it will give you enough time to change um, the CLI commands in your automation scripts, which I'll talk about in a bit. Um, that similarly, we have also refactored a Kubernetes executor and Kubernetes pod operator to make the Airflow and Kubernetes integration more powerful um, in 2.0. I'll also get to that one in a very few slides. Um, that should also work in 1.10.15. In and same with configurations. We removed some of the configurations. We renamed some of the configurations. But for 1.10.15, both the old names and the new names will continue to work. So more 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 and more or so reasons to um, come to 110.15 before upgrading to 2.0. 2 
Also, the backport providers um, work seamlessly with 1.10.15. I'll also talk about that in a second. Um, providers, if you if you haven't already heard about it, it's another previously in 1.10x versions, we, we had um, all those operators and hooks inside uh, the contrib sections for the most of the other integrations. We have now logically grouped them and we release them separately. So, and we also backported those providers to 110x versions to make the migration path easier. This is not saying you cannot directly upgrade to Airflow 2 from like 110.5 or something, but this is what we recommend because we have made a huge effort. And when I say we, it is the entire community uh, to make sure that the migration is as easy and as seamless as possible. And as a part of this effort, the and an inspiration for Airflow upgrade check scripts was Python two to three. We had this, or we had same sort of issue uh, for the in terms of users where users were trying to migrate from Python two to three, and Python two to three script was a bit helpful. Uh, we thought of the similar to make a similar script where it would be easier for users to to know what changed and. If a script just shows you, okay, this is what you need to change. This is what has changed. You need to change something in your deck files or something like that. That would be ideal. So Airflow upgrade check scripts are exactly that. It, it is a separate Python package, which is available to install from PyPy. It only works currently on 110.14 and 110.15. We aimed it to create similar to um, Python 2.2.3, if you run it, the only difference, the only main difference was that with Python 2.2.3, you could, it aut automatically changes some of the stuff. Where, whereas with um, the upgrade check scripts, it will just tell you because we don't want to assume what um, the users already know. That's why we will not automatically change anything. We'll just detect and show it to you that, okay, you need to update this. Um, it it detects like deprecated and incompatible changes in uh, that are in currently running Airflow environment by checking your Airflow configurations, your deck files, plugins that you're using, and the metadata database, um, values the metadata database. It's a tongue twister, metadata database. Anyways, um, it's, it's easy to install the upgrade check scripts, which is just pip install Apache Airflow upgrade check scripts. Uh, at, at, the, at this time, the latest version available, and it is also the final version that we released for it is 1.4.0. To use it, just run Airflow upgrade check. Once you install it, you could you can just use this command um, where, wherever your Airflow is installed. And it should run certain checks. Uh, currently, we have around 24 rules um, that will be run against the environment. And let's see what the output would look like. This is the example output when you run that command. Here it is telling me that I'm using the legacy Flask admin based UI. Um, it is smart. It, it will skip any changes that does not apply to your setup. For example, if you're using Celery Executor, uh, all the checks related to Kubernetes Executor will be skipped. It will show you, it will like, it's shown over there that in yellow that it is skipped, but it will also show you what the changes were at the bottom of the screen. So. If you're applying to switch executor when you upgrade, this um, will come in handy. Like I said, we have around 24 uh, rules. Here's a screenshot with the entire list. And you could run airflow upgrade check dash dash list command um, to see it yourselves. Uh, first and foremost, checking with like the version check um, CLI itself is up to date or not. And there are all, all those other, other rules. I'll, I'll not go um, with the entire list, but you, you could just run this command for the list. So once you run that command, it will come up with all these recommendations saying, change this, change that. In my case, I need to change the Arabic uh, configurations to true because the old Flask admin legacy UI has been deprecated. It is no longer available in Airflow 2 and above. Um, so I need to change that fix and run all the checks pass. The example I showed here had just one failure, mainly because I didn't have any DAGs, but if you had any DAGs, it might show you more failures. And so fix and run until all the checks checks pass. 
Now, this script is not perfect, right? It will show you false positive. We, we have tried our level best to make it as nearer to perfect as we can, um, but it, it will fail uh, or it might show you false positive. That's why for convenience, you can use the ignore flag and um, add the name of the rule that you want to ignore and it will just ignore ignore that ignore that check otherwise it's annoying to see a failure when there is no failure so you could also ignore ignore the uh, certain rules you can also add your own rules i don't i won't go into the detail but that's available in the upgrading guide which will, i will link in in the next uh, slide or so now as i explained there are almost there are just four sort of changes um, configurations deck files plugins and meta database so let's go across each of them. And that's also what the upgrade check command would show. So start. let's start with deck file changes. From airflow 2.1 or 2.0 onwards, all the operators, hooks, sensors, secrets, even the log, uh, log related changes were grouped logically into providers. Uh, example, all Google operators, Google Cloud Storage, uh, BigQuery and everything were grouped under a single provider called Apache Airflow Providers Google Package. Uh, these are released separately, versioned separately, then the Apache Airflow Core for easier maintenance and also allows us to release them more frequently because core would change once every two months or so, whereas the client libraries uh, of all the integrations can change separately. Um, and a lot of, lot of our users uh, said in during 110X that, we want to use these new operators. And they were, they had to wait for the new Airflow release to, to come uh, for, for just using that operator. So that didn't make any sense. So having these separations uh, allow us to release um, providers more frequently. Now, most of these operators that are, uh, that are now called providers, all the operators, hooks and sensors and everything are backported to 110X because there was a time where the Airflow's master was around 2000 commits um, behind or ahead than the Airflow 110X branch. So to allow users to use the new, newest, greatest and latest operators and hooks, we backported them. This also allows a good migration path. So we have around 66 um, backport providers. I have added a link to all these providers, uh, the PyPy link. These backport providers, I would recommend just use it with 110.14 or 110 15 um, because it will it will work seamlessly with them. The older version will might have some changes that are not compatible. So also an important point to stress here is I have seen a lot of users when migrating to 2.0 still try to use backport providers. What will happen is if you try to use install a backport provider when um, your environment already contains Airflow 2.0. It will upgrade the provide. Uh, it will upgrade the backport provider, but it will downgrade the Airflow version to 110.15 because backport providers are only for 110.14 and 110.15, and providers are only for 2.0 and above. The key being backport. Those are operators, hooks, and everything. Those are providers that are for 2.0 and above, which are backported to 110x. Just want to make sure everyone understands that. Here is the screenshot of some of these backport providers. Uh, IMAP, Snowflake, Discord, Oracle. This all contains either hooks, operators, sensors, or any combination of them. Now, command to install um, backport providers is easier. Uh, we, we had followed a Calver versioning. So that's why you see 2021.3.17 because that was the last released versions for these back providers. Well, we followed Samver for actual providers to install like um, Docker backport provider. It is Apache Airflow backport providers Docker. Similarly, to install providers, it is the Apache Airflow providers Docker. But let's talk about just 1015 for now. So just install that. Update, if you're using the Docker operator um, in your deck file, change the import path um, as shown in this slide. 
from airflow.operators.docker operator, change that to from airflow.providers.docker.operators. .docker .operators. Same for Amazon, same for Google, same for all these providers, right? Just import, change the import line. Most of these parts will also continue working if you even upgrade to 2.0 without that. Uh, but it will show you deprecation warning. And of course, there might be feature mismatch. So better upgrade to them um, sooner rather than later. Another 2.0 change that affects what you use in a task or DAG is the refactor of the Kubernetes executor and the Kubernetes pod operator. Um, previously, we had created custom classes for various Kubernetes objects like port, volume mount, volumes, etc., and we were maintaining it. This was needed when the Kubernetes in integration was just introduced in Airflow uh, as the APIs and mainly the Python client were not mature yet, but it's not needed anymore. So we have deprecated those old classes that we were maintaining and instead we now recommend to directly and support uh, directly using the Kubernetes um, objects directly from the Python client, which is instead of using from Airflow, uh, dot Kubernetes dot pod dot import port. You can just now um, import the v1 container port directly from the Kubernetes Python client. Uh, similar, similarly, you could do the same for volume and volume mounts as well. It's uh, the link here should give you all the examples for that. Next up, next up is configuration related changes. So let's first talk about the, comp the configuration changes that were compatible. So we renamed max threads to passing processes um, for ease of understanding. And then we backported it to 110.14 as well. So you could use, again, the same thing. You could use, uh, keep on using max threads for 2.0 as well. It will show you deprecation warning, but I would suggest just remove max threads to remove any confusion, start using parsing processes. Similar, some of the other configs were grouped and moved. Uh, we, we were using all the logging configurations um, in core and metrics were in sh um, scheduler section. We have moved them to um, their, their own dedicated sections called lo logging and metrics. Matric um, but this change on only happened in 2.0. They will keep on working, but will raise deprecation warning. So make those changes sooner rather than later. And at least for airflow.cfc, uh, you should only put the stuff that you are overriding. You don't need to put all the settings in your airflow.cfc. Just put the configurations which you want to override. And that will make those migrations easier. Uh, one of the major changes in Airflow 2.0 that I said was we dropped the support for the legacy UI, the Flask admin based UI, and we moved to Flask app builder based UI, the RP, uh, also known as the RPEC UI. We have supported RPEC UI now since 1.10.0. Um, it also have, it has also matured a lot now. So if you have not started using RPEC UI, upgrade to 1.10.15 and change to using the RPEC UI. There's a lot of good features. Uh, you can, you will have role-based access, role-based access control. Um, no, no longer, but yeah, no, uh, an auth is required by default. The old UI, you could not have any auth on it, and uh, anyone can visit your web page. Uh, this one, that's it. So you need to create your users uh, if you don't want to use uh, one of these. Uh, Integrate auth integrations, right? Because we are piggybacking on Flask App Builder, it allows integrating with LDAP, normal database user password, open ID, auth, and all, all, all that good stuff. Another thing that has surprised few users is the removal of data profiling, ad hoc query, and charts in the new UI. So we have removed those because there were a lot of security concerns with it. We had couple of CVs, so we have just removed those. And I'll recommend using separate tool like Apache Superset for creating charts or even running ad hoc queries. Just need to add the connection string for the meta database. So that is another major change. 
similar change is Kubernetes executor. This is a breaking change. So because you can now directly use uh, the Kubernetes API directly, uh, we also now support something called pod template file. So you must have seen this entire list. We, we are, when using Kubernetes executor, you could specify the labels, the annotations and whatnot. Uh, it, it was again, a lot of maintenance overhead to maintain all the settings separately. So we have removed all these uh, configurations and all these uh, different sections from airflow.cfg. And now we allow you to use a pod template file where you could say, you, where you could just put a base YAML file and you could layer on top of it. And this makes Kubernetes executor a lot more powerful because you could layer, you could use pod template file as the base layer. You could override settings while um, in the executor config and then in actual local settings using pod mutation hook and whatnot. That's a, that's a different um, topic. And I think Daniel Imberman has a separate talk. Um, in, uh, if, if not for the summit, he had it for some meetup. So I'd recommend watching that. Next up, changes to Airflow plugins. So where do we use plugins for? Uh, one of the primary reasons for plugins was first using for using it for operators, hooks, sensors, which was an anti-pattern. I'll get to that too. But according to me, it is mainly, or it should mainly be used for UI related changes, which is admin views, ad adding views and links um, on the Airflow web server. So because the old Flask admin UI had this admin views for app builder, we have similarly app, app builder views for menu links. It's called app, bel app builder menu items. The difference is not that much to be honest, like you can already see the, it's a straightforward change. Instead of you are using this menu links, just change it to the corresponding app builder menu items. And yeah, now, as I, uh, you must have wondered, some of you must have wondered why I said um, it was an anti-pattern to use operators, hooks, and census wire plugins. We no longer, first of all, we no longer support that. I don't know why we introduced it because you could just use normal Python modules for that. Operators are just Python classes, same for hooks and sensors. You could just import it as it is. You could even distribute um, them to a separate Python package and or put the Python module on the Python path and directly import them. A good example is over there. That if you were using from airflow.operators.custom mod, uh, um, module and importing your my operator, then directly just import it using your module and import your operator. That's it. There's, there's a good documentation we have on the Airflow website check the module management page for that. Now, a, a lot of us use um, Terraform and Ansible for automating a uh, lot of airflow related stuff for APIs and CLIs. We have changed CLI commands a lot, right? Uh, as I explained at the start of this talk that we have grouped all of them. So here's a list of, of, of most of the changes, if not all. And the full list is available in that uh, link. Um, this works for 1, 10, 14. So if you are using your automation scripts in Terraform and Ansible, upgrade those to use the newer syntax. So when you changed, uh, when you use uh, 2.0 and onwards, nothing breaks. 1, 10, 15, both will be compatible. So good, good chance to upgrade those um, CLI commands. Similar for the API, our experimental API was experimental for a long time. This has now been deprecated and instead we have a new stable REST API with all um, that uses open API under the hood with clear documentation, with more endpoints than the experimental API. Uh, we have a nice uh, guide on migrating from experimental to the stable API, but the stable REST API is only available after you upgrade to 2.0. So before upgrading to 2.0, just make sure you 
have those changes, but do not apply it or do not start using it. Only use it after you update to 2.0. The migration guide will show you how you could replace the experimental endpoints to the stable API endpoints. So do not update it in 1.10.15, just update it before restarting your components um, when you are updating to 2.0. And installing extras. This, is, this has been a source of some confusion for some users, uh, at least some of the users I have talked to, that previously the users were using pip install, Apache Airflow, brackets, Google, or GCP, GCP API. How will this um, new separation of providers affect that? So let me try and explain that over here and remove those confusions. From Airflow 2.0 and onwards, these extras are used for a couple of things. Installing the optional core dependencies like LDAP, RabbitMQ, StatsD, which are not providers, and even virtual and they are, they are not separate providers, but using pip install Apache Airflow and StatsD, which will install StatsD for you, will install the StatsD Python client for you uh, if you're using monitoring, um, but it won't install a separate provider. Now, if you used pip install Apache Airflow Google, it will install the latest provider, latest available provider. So the current latest available Google provider is 4.0.0. So if you do pip install Apache Airflow Google, it will fetch the uh, Google provider and it will install that. There are also certain pre-installed providers like FTP, IMAP, SQLite, and HTTP. HTTP was removed for 2.1.0 um, because of licensing issues, but that has now been sorted out. So for 2.1.2 or for 2.1.3, HTTP provider will be installed by default. So be cautious when you use uh, Google provider or whatever provider you use, be cautious when installing providers via extras because it will always pull the latest uh, available provider unless if you're using constraints file, which I'll, I'll explain again in a second. And list of all, uh, all the available extras are here. Uh, we have also changed some of the extras like there were some inconsistencies in 110X, like we were using GCP, we were using GCP API, we had a lot of extras for Azure. We have grouped them as well and made sure that it's now more consistent. So this list, this list should hopefully uh, clear that confusion. We have also grouped them based on the foundation they are under. So for example, Atlas is under Apache Software Foundation, so we could install PIP install apache.atlas, same for C, um, Kubernetes, pip install cncf.kubernetes. Don't need to memorize them. The list has everything in it. Changes to connection. This has also confused some of the users. So first is the simple change. We no longer allow duplicate connection IDs uh, from Airflow 2.0. Uh, so when you are in 110.5 and if you run the upgrade check, scripts, uh, it will it will show you if you have duplicate connection IDs. So make sure you remove duplicate IDs. It was poor man's load balancer previously. Like if you have a same connection ID, Airflow would use randomly um, use one of the two, but that won't work from 2.0. So just use, just remove the duplicates. Secondly, which is more important is previously in 110X, if you clicked on connection type, you will see all the connection types that were available in the Airflow, in, inside Airflow, that Airflow supported. But from 2.1 onwards, it will only show the connection types that are for, for which the Airflow providers have been installed. So let's say if you, have, you just install Google provider and that's it. You have core Airflow and Google provider. Then the connection type here will just be all the Google related connection types, which is BigQuery, GCS, and the Google, uh, the base Google connection type. This won't be shown. Amazon, Azure, Azure Elastic Map, just they won't be shown. So that is another important change. So if you are just wondering that if you're migrated to 2.0 and it's like, why is Azure not showing up here? Why is uh, Google not showing up here? It, is, it might be 90% might be because you have not 
install that connection type. So make sure you install that connect, uh, install that provider. Um, the connection types are now fetched from those providers. Uh, so do that. Now, whenever you upgrade uh, an Airflow version, there are high chances that some of these upgrades will have database migrations. Database migrations like just rename of the columns, uh, adding new columns, removing col uh, uh, columns, and, and stuff like that. If you Airflow by default does not clean up any um, any columns or does not delete any rows. So if you have not cleaned anything by default, it, it is very likely that your task instance table or your diagram table might be in upwards of 100,000, 1 million if you, are, if you are running for a long, long time. So before you upgrade to 2.0, I would recommend that you use uh, the maintenance tag that are provided by Clairvoyant, or if you know by yourself what you're doing, you could delete the task instances, diagrams, XCOMs, log, and all those records that are more than probably one year or whatever the retention policy of your company is. If you don't need um, logs or if you don't need records for more than like last two months or so, why keep it, right? So just delete it. The reason is if you have a lot of these rows, then when you when the database migrations run, when you run Airflow DB upgrade or Airflow DB in it, it will try to update these records if there is such a migration. And there are 19 database migration between 1.10.15 to 2.0. And some of them involve the big tables like task instances and diagram. So it will take that amount of time. It can, it can take up to 10 minutes uh, and, and probably more if you have a um, lot of task instances and a lot of diagrams, for example. So check out the maintenance decks from Clairvoyant. It's pretty good from what I have heard from others. I, I know many companies using it. So take a look at that. Now we have got all this sorted. It's time to actually upgrade to Tudoto. So how to do that? We have done all the necessary changes. So now, first of all, pause all the decks and make sure that no tasks are running. The main reason is if anything is running, if your tasks are running, it will write stuff to your meta database. And if you are running database migration while something is already writing to your database, that will cause lots of issues and even might crash your scheduler. So let's not do that. Pause all the decks, make sure no tasks are running, back up your meta database, back up your airflow.cfg. And if you're using environment variables to set um, airflow.cfg to that. Stop all these components, web server, scheduler, workers, stop all of this. Remove all the backport providers that you had installed previously um, for the migration because as I said previously, for airflow 2.1 upwards, you just need to use providers, not backport providers. Now, upgrade to the latest airflow version. Airflow 2.1.1 is available now. 2.1.2 will be available from tomorrow and onwards. But if you want to install, if you want to upgrade to 2.1.1 right now, use the constraints file. If you don't know about constraints file, read it on the Airflow documentation. It is a way of, for Airflow to say, we have tested, um, tested it against this set of dependencies. We have pinned those dependencies saying, OK, this only works with. Uh, Pandas 2.0.0 or 2.1.0 uh, because we have started using constraints file because Airflow has a lot of dependencies, uh, really a lot of dependencies. So it is not um, always possible to get everything right. It has also happened that we have released an Airflow version and in just a few hours, a new library might have cut a major release or even a, they have introduced a breaking change in a minor or even a patch version, which breaks Airflow. It, if you if you even try to install Airflow, it does not work. So make sure you're using the constraints file when upgrading. So just pip install, upgrade Airflow, upgrade Apache Airflow, and use the constraints file. This command is handy. It is from installation.rst on the on the Airflow documentation side. Now, install code extras if you are using Statsd and stuff. 
install providers via extras or directly using pip install commands. As I said, if you install connections, if you install providers via extras, it will install the latest version unless latest version of the providers, unless those versions are already specified in the constraints file. We have started, we have started adding those um, providers as well in the constraints file, but we now have three sets of constraints files. So if you are not installing any uh, providers, you don't need to use the, this constraint file. You could use constraints, no providers or something. Uh, check, check for that on the documentation side. But there's also a second perspective, which is like something in uh, 400 of um, the providers does not work for you. Like 400, it means it's a major upgrade. If you are still relying on the older um, providers for Google, like 3.0 or something, then you, you want to use that instead of 4.0. So make sure you pick and choose which one do you want. Do you want the latest for the providers? or do you want to do something that you have already tested with? Before doing that, make sure you have tested um, your DAGs with that particular provider. There's a good link uh, that I have linked here um, on explaining the differences uh, of providers, when to use them, and some FAQs about them, uh, some common problems. Now, Make sure all the breaking changes are taken care of. We have talked. We already talked about the the deck files, the configuration changes, uh, verifying the duplicate airflow connections, providers are installed or not. Make sure that you have updated your automation scripts. If you are using, if you are installing airflow using Ansible or something, you might want to update your CLI commands. You you want to make sure that uh, if you are creating pools and anything, those commands are up to date. So. Make sure you have updated um, those commands. If you are using old API, now is the time to migrate to the stable API. So use that migration guide that I talked about and change um, your automation, even if it's Terraform, Ansible, or, or some other tool. Just take a peek over updating.md and updating guide. Some of the items are mentioned in one guide and not in the other. We should fix that inconsistencies, but at least for now, take a look at both of these so that you don't miss any major changes or any changes that affect you uh, or affect the providers or integration that you use. So make sure to just quickly at least take a look at that. Now, upgrade the metadata database. Since you have already taken a backup of it, even if something goes wrong, you can quickly roll over. So run airflow db upgrade command. Do not run FRDB in it um, because it will create uh, example DAGs or example connections for you. So just, just run DB upgrade. It can take up to 10, 15 minutes if there are more DAGs and your DB hasn't already been clean or pruned. And then you can start all your Airflow components. Like you can start Airflow, scheduler, worker, uh, and web server. Good job. <laughs> uh, now you're upgraded to Airflow 2.0 finally, or 2.1.1. So I have some recommendations that I would like to say. This, uh, I, I want to make sure that you follow these recommendations before you even upgrade, at least some of this. Use Postgres. So in our testing, at least, uh, some of the MySQL versions won't work with uh, scheduler HA. That, we, that is, you won't be able to run two schedulers at the time. Uh, so at least my MySQL 5.7 does not work. If you're using MySQL 8, it will work. But at least Postgres versions have shown a better performance than any MySQL version, even my MariaDB, uh, MS SQL, and whatnot. Second is test your upgrading this on your dev environment first. Do not try to be brave enough and try to upgrade your production environment first. Make sure to at least use a subset of your DAG files in your dev environment and try and test them uh, with this upgrade process that I just went over. And if everything works fine, then do it in the production. It, it seems silly that I'm explaining that, but 
I have seen a lot of customers doing that. So make sure you do that first. And this, I already explained that your airflow.cfg does not need to contain all uh, the configurations. It should only contain the configurations that you want to overwrite uh, so that it is easier for my migration. So for rename, if you are using the default value of the max threads, you don't need to put it in the airflow.cfg because when the time comes that you need to upgrade, you don't need to do anything if you haven't um, uh, overridden the default value. Fourth point, always like upgrade to the latest patch release. From Airflow 2.0 and onwards, Airflow follows strict framework. That is, we won't break anything in any patch versions. We, don't, we won't break any compatibility in patch versions or even minor versions. Some of this backward compatible stuff, we would maintain it till Airflow 3.0. Uh, when Airflow 3.0 would occur, I'll probably uh, let you watch the talk from Ash and Isamel. Uh, from yesterday. And lastly, use the constraints file. That is the recommended way of running or installing Airflow. Do not try and install Airflow without constraints file because some of the, some library that you might be using might break your Airflow environment. So only use your constraints file for installation. And that's it. Thank you.